Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. It has been a very long time since I have uploaded and that you've probably heard from me. Um, it's actually been at least two years since my last video upload here on YouTube. And the reason I decided to come back and do this video is because I did get a lot of questions about my FAI hip surgery and recovery, which I documented for many of you uh, a week after, two weeks after, I think maybe three months post-op, and then that was it. I went radio silent on all of you and definitely was not my intention. Uh, I have tried to keep up with a lot of the comments and questions that I was receiving about FAI hip surgery because so many of you kept finding my videos and I really started to feel bad that I had left everyone just kind of like hanging there. Um, so I wanted to come back and do a two year post-surgery update to let you all know how I've been doing, answer some of the most frequently asked questions, and just connect with you guys because I know how difficult it is when you are deciding to go through a major surgery. You've probably found this video by searching for hip pain, back pain, FAI, impingement, and I think it's really important if someone has gone through something that they can use what they've learned and tips and just experience to help others out there. So if you are interested in hearing uh, all about my experience two years post-op of my FAI hip surgery and just want to get a little bit of a better perspective on somebody who's had it done and has been out of the recovery phase for a really long time, please keep watching. Um, one of the things I found about YouTube and FAI hip surgery is there was not a whole lot of people out there sharing their true experience um, in a very authentic and genuine and raw way. Um, I also found a lot of videos that were anti-surgery, which look, there are two schools of thought about this whole process and I definitely recommend if you've been diagnosed with a labral tear in your hip, if you have a bone impingement if you're in your hip, if you are being told that you have an FAI injury, um, you're gonna search, you're gonna find, and you're gonna have a lot of people who tell you, do not go under the knife. Then there are other people who are gonna tell you that, look, you can try all of the other remedies, but in the end, they may not stop your pain and you may decide that surgery is the best option for you. Backtrack two years ago, June of 2018, I did have FAI hip surgery on my right hip. I had a labrum tear, which was pretty significant. Um, and then I also had two bone impingements. One was on the pincer bone and one was on the cam bone. So ultimately for me, I wasn't just dealing with a labral tear, which a lot of people out there, especially athletes, do have. and live long, normal, you know, prosperous lives, um, and it doesn't impact their day-to-day -day or their training. Um, but then there are people who do have bone impingements and sometimes bone spurs, um, extra pieces of bone or maybe calcification on that hip joint that over time, no matter what you do, is going to continue to tear away at the labrum. So for someone like me who anatomically had two bone impingements, it was just a matter of time until the labrum just kept getting worse and worse. So um, for me, it was you know my decision. It was uh, something I got two opinions on from two different doctors, two different orthopedic centers, and I had my operation on June 13th of 2018. Now, for those of you who have watched my other videos about my FAI surgery, you know the whole backstory, but for those of you who are new, um, it took me about a year and a half to diagnose my issue. Um, two years prior, I had been having issues in my sleep with my lower back becoming very stiff, and overnight, my right hip would fall asleep and feel really numb. It would always feel like I was sleeping on a heating pad, and progressively it just started to get worse where the whole area felt numb and uncomfortable. Um, 
I love weight training. I had been weight training for many, many years. And uh, at that time I was doing pretty heavy weights. I was doing um, five, five, five training. I was doing, you know, uh, uh, basically all the heavy lifts. I was doing deadlifts and back squats and hex squats. And I loved lifting weights. And I found that my lower back was feeling not strong at all. Um, I constantly felt a nagging pain in my lower right side that would kind of feel like I needed to pop or like twist to just get that pressure relieved. And I can never do that. And that pain, which almost felt like a sciatic back pain, would go all the way down my right side and then all the way into my hip and just got progressively worse. Over the year and a half, two years, I tried to diagnose my issue it was a constant back and forth with, is this a hip issue or is this a back issue? And what you will find is a lot of back issues mimic hip issues and a lot of hip pain mimics back pain. And so because your lower back is constantly under stress and because if you're lifting a lot, you're always gonna feel like maybe it's a back issue, I spent so much time trying to figure out what the hell was wrong with me. And unfortunately, when it comes to FAI or lower back issues, no one really comes out and says, this thing is causing this pain and if you do X, you will fix Y. So great example, when I started my journey, I thought this was a back issue. So I did chiropractic care, I got x-rays of my back. I had an MRI done of my back, specifically my lower disc, so L4, L5, S1. And chiropractic did help. Um, I found out I did have degeneration of L4 and L5. Um, and then they also said that they saw a little bit of, um, not a slip in the disc, but when I would bend in certain ways, you could see that the, uh, L5 and S1, there was just not a smooth kind of, I guess, bend there. Um, so over time what happened and what they saw in the MRI was it felt like there was fluid in that area, which was obviously from inflammation, um, but they couldn't say for sure if what was happening in my hip was because of my back. And that was about six months. Fast forward, um, I kept telling my husband about my hip pain and my hip issues and he years prior had had FAI hip surgery and he kept telling me Adrian everything that you're saying all of your issues all of your symptoms sound like what I had you might want to just rule out that this isn't a hip issue and uh, I said it's a good idea to check right always get a second opinion so I went to his orthopedic doctor who did his hip surgery and his doctor also did uh, his shoulder surgeries. And so we really trusted him. So I went to see him and then again, the whole thing started with uh, x-ray of the hip. Um, I had some physical therapy to try. Um, and then the doctor said the best way to rule out an FAI injury is to go in for a hip arthrogram. So a hip arthrogram is where you get a uh, dye and a pain medication injected right into the hip joint, which is not comfortable, I will tell you that. Um, and basically what it helps you to do is number one, put the dye in there um, so you can go ahead and do an MRI to see if the labrum is actually torn. But what it also will do is because it has that pain medication in it, if you're issues or your pain feels relieved in those first couple of days, then you kind of know that you're dealing with a, a hip issue. Um, if for some reason they do the injection and you're still having pain, uh, then that definitely means it could be something else. But if you are finding relief after doing the injection, then nine times out of 10, you're dealing with um, an, a hip issue. So I had my MRI done and when I went back to that first doctor, he said, I see a tear of your labrum, but I do not think you need surgery. I said, okay. 
He said, I actually would recommend you go see this other doctor, this female doctor, and she's a specialist in spine, and I would recommend you go to see her and try potentially doing injections of the spine to see if you get relief from your pain. So I did that. Now this is like probably a year in. I'm going back and forth through all these doctors. I'm in all of this discomfort. I have also, during this period, done everything I possibly can in my control to prevent pain. I stopped lifting heavy, which crushed me. Like, I love working out. I love being challenged in the gym, but I said, let me reduce any type of activity that's gonna inflame my body and potentially make things worse. So I stopped working out in that way. Um, I didn't eat anything inflammatory. I didn't eat anything that would um, cause any type of response in my body inflammatory wise. And I started taking things like turmeric, which I'm a huge fan of, yada, yada. So I go and see this spine lady who now looks at my MRI again of my spine and sees the inflammation and basically tells me, uh, I think you should do injections in your spine. And if that doesn't help, we can consider talking about surgery. I'm like, look, lady, I know you have all the best intentions. I am not convinced this is a spine issue. And second of all, I am not putting tools anywhere near my spine. I really was not comfortable with the idea of injecting my spine. I didn't want to go anywhere near my spine. So at that point, I think it was like December of 2017 and was just frustrated and just said, I'm not even dealing with this anymore. Anyhow, um, I took all of my um, MRIs, my x-rays, and I went to a new orthopedic doctor. And uh, he read all of my charts um, and he ordered another MRI arthrogram. And he in fact did find um, the labrum tear to be significant enough that he thought it was a cause of concern. And then he was the one who spotted um, my cam bone impingement um, and the pincer bone impingement. Um, and so at that point, I had a really, you know, sit down heart to heart with him and said, look, I'm a year and a half into this thing. If you really truly believe that surgery is what I need to do to relieve this, to get back into the gym, to get back on with my life, I, I will do it. You have to understand when somebody is just at their wits end, when they are so frustrated that every single time you go to a doctor, you know that I'm leaving here and it's gonna be another three or four weeks until I get answers. I leave the doctor, I gotta go get an MRI, I have to go visit the doctor again for him to read the MRI to tell me then what I'm supposed to do. It just felt like I was being like bounced around and during all of this, a year and a half, I'm in pain, I'm in discomfort, I'm not on any medication, I'm not taking anything, um, I'm not working out, I'm not doing anything I love, and it was like horrible. So my surgery lasted, I want to say, maybe like an hour-ish, hour and a half. Um, I did go under general anesthesia, so completely knocked out. Um, I, again, got really, really nervous before the surgery. I was waiting in like the pre-op area. The girl had come over to start giving me fluids and actually they didn't get the vein. So my entire forearm filled up with fluid. It was really, really cold. And I had this big, massive bubble under the skin of IV fluid, which right away I, I like felt like this, I'm doomed. This is not gonna go well. I was so nervous, my anxiety was so high. I was like, please just give me something or knock me out now because this is now making me really, really nervous. Um, I do remember going into the surgery room um, before I got in there, my anesthesiologist turned to me and she said, I'm gonna give you a really great glass of champagne. Just think about uh, you know having brunch on Sunday with your girlfriends and then I remember seeing the operating room because I saw my doctor's face when I was coming in, but then that's all I remember. Um, I came out of surgery and I stayed in post-op or like recovery um, for almost two hours because um, 
by the time they bandaged me up, by the time they got me over there, by the time I came to really, I also told them I don't want to be rushed out of um, the recovery because as soon as I leave here, um, I'm not sure like like how I'm going to feel. So I'd rather stay here until all the grogginess wanes a little bit. Um, and I woke up with a massive bandage on my hip area. Um, they gave me a walker to take home because number one, you are so groggy and disoriented from the anesthesia. And two, like it's really difficult to learn how to use crutches and use your upper body, especially when you're like really woozy. So they gave me a walker and when it was time to go home, um, I was able to get into the car just fine. I highly recommend if you're having FAI surgery, make sure you have someone who has like just a regular sedan car. Don't try and get in like an SUV. Don't try and get in a car that's super low. Uh, a crossover probably works just as well. Um, but I was comfortable enough to get home. And once I got home, I felt okay. I wasn't sick from my anesthesia. Um, I didn't have any, you know, vomiting or dizziness or anything from it. Um, once I got on my couch and settled, I could definitely tell I just really wanted to take a nap and sleep it off. Um, I wasn't very hungry at all. And the other thing I do remember is my throat being really, really dry and scratchy um, because they do have to like put the tube down you while you are under. So I uh, highly recommend getting like throat lozenges or like a lozenge spray for your throat because you are going to have a little bit of sore throat feeling after. Um, and then the very first day I was required to go on my um, passive motion machine, which was, uh, it's called a CPM machine, so continuous passive motion. And basically it mimics the movement of your knee going up and down to just get your joint moving again. So the first day after this surgery isn't like most other surgeries where it's go home, rest, sleep it off. Like you actually have to actively do things to start with your recovery on the very first day. Um, but that was, that was fine. Um, and I would say for the first three days, it was really tough. The inability to move your leg and your hip is very, very obvious in the first day because you're gonna try and move your leg and you really can't. Um, not physically, you can't, the actual pressure and pain in the hip joint is too much that you can't lift your leg up or off of a chair um, or off of a bed, you are gonna need help you are going to be on um, some type of restriction for weight bearing. For me, I was told I would be um, partial weight bearing for the first three weeks. So the first three to five days, I was using a walker um, and putting no weight on my uh, right leg, except for like my tippy toes, very lightly. Um, and then after I got off the walker, I was on my two crutches um, partial weight bearing for two weeks and then I was down to one crutch in the house at about two and a half weeks and I was off my crutches completely after I think it was like week three. Keep in mind every single orthopedic surgeon, every single doctor has a different protocol. Some will make you be no weight bearing for four weeks, some might be partial your doctor will know your case best. Um, but for me, I was down to like one crutch after like two and a half weeks. Um, you retain a lot of fluids the first two or three days because they are putting a lot of fluids in you pre and during and post um, operation. But because they're using all these tools to like move things around and shave things and all the other things they did inside, um, you are swollen, you are puffy. And so you kind of see yourself for the first time and it doesn't look like your leg. It doesn't feel like you. Um, so that was really challenging for me. Um, I learned how to properly like wash everything and cover everything. So basically while I had sutures in uh, my incisions, I could bathe like normal. I had to keep them super dry after, but I was not to put really anything on them until the stitches came out. Um, they came out about a week later. I think it was my one week post-op. Super easy, snip, snip, they were out. 
Um, one of my favorite products that I did buy, I'll link it below, was my shower stool. I can't tell you how difficult it would have been to shower holding crutches or being so afraid to slip and fall after my surgery. So I did buy a shower stool that was actually a rotating one. So I would sit in my stool, let the water hit me in the shower, do all of my washing. I'd spin myself in the shower, wash my hair, let it all rinse out. And to be honest, it was like the most relaxing thing for me to just sit there in a nice warm uh, shower, get a little steam going and just be off my feet for a little bit. Um, I think I really used my shower stool for three weeks um, and absolutely recommend getting that thing. It was wonderful. The last thing I highly recommend, I ordered all of these things on Amazon, is my table tray because after your surgery for about the first three, maybe four weeks, I slept on my couch on the chase end because you have to um, sleep kind of elevated. You need to make sure that um, you're not spinning or moving in your sleep. And the first week and a half, I was um, encouraged to use a boot on my feet and tape my feet together so that my hip wouldn't turn out in my sleep. So I literally had to sleep with my feet straight forward like this. And so it was really difficult to try and do that in a normal bed. It's also very difficult to get up from a, like a completely sleeping position. So by sitting in my um, chase end of my couch, I could just move my leg over, move the other one, and then just kind of like get up over time and use my like crutch to help me do that. So um, I always had my table tray next to me with, you know, my phone charger and my drinks and my remote and all of the medicines and yada yada. So I definitely recommend that having a nice comfortable place to sleep and recuperate. Um, I did start physical therapy about five or six days after surgery. Um, I did that at a Kessler locally to me. Um, it was great for just getting some range of motion back, being able to move myself again. Um, I did that for about two or three weeks, a couple times a week. And then after that, I just kind of stopped going and you know, it's probably not a good idea to like quit physical therapy. Um, but for me, I felt like I had all of the exercises I needed. I had a home gym. I could just do it at home with resistance bands and balls. Um, and so I didn't feel like the physical therapy was more athletic kind of recovery therapy. And I wanted something more challenging, especially because I was so used to lifting weights. Um, it just felt it got too easy for me. And so I just took everything I learned from PT and then just incorporated that at home and it was completely fine. The other thing that I will tell you is a godsend and recommend, and if you don't have access to a gym at home, you may want to just purchase uh, a bike to have in your house. Um, I will link below the spin bike that I purchased. I actually use it to this day. I think it was like $399 on Amazon. Um, the stationary bike is your best friend when going through FAI surgery recovery. The motion of being on the bike to warm up your hip joint, to keep it moving, to just keep your heart pumping, to be healthy, to aid in your recovery was amazing. I looked forward to using the bike every day and I would find that when I didn't use the bike, I felt more stiff and it really just helped me get my range of motion back with my hip so much faster. So I would bike every single day um, and really, really enjoyed it. Uh, resistance bands too. I did a ton of work with resistance bands to just get that hip flexor moving and firing again and get it stronger. From three months to your first year after FAI hip surgery recovery, it is a roller coaster and that is normal. You are going to have months where everything feels great, you're feeling great, you're doing things you never thought you could do, and then out of nowhere, things might feel uncomfortable. A lot of people I've talked to and um, people who've reached out to me said they have a very similar experience where 
it's not going to be like day one is terrible and every day after that things just progressively get better recovery is a journey and so if you have moments where things don't feel good if you're in the gym and something feels uncomfortable listen to your body you get one chance to heal properly and this is not a competition no one's going to get a trophy for recovering faster and it's so important to get it right so i highly recommend you know going in and training but if something doesn't feel right and something doesn't feel comfortable stop and do something else I was back in the gym weight training lightly at probably three four month mark but I was not doing full squats at all until maybe like month six where I could do a semi like body weight squat but even when I would do that I would notice my right hip never was in line with my left like you could just see that it wasn't comfortable enough yet and I never felt like I could get deep enough into a squat without it feeling like tight um, and so when people ask me that they say hey when did you get back in the gym after your surgery I really don't feel like I can confidently tell anyone you're going to feel 100% to start training without reservation for a year. That doesn't mean I wasn't in the gym in that first year because I was, but I didn't go anywhere near a, an Olympic bar with 25 pound plates to do a back squat in that first year. I can tell you that for certain because again, for me, it wasn't worth rushing back into the gym to do that and then injure myself so i did a lot of like air squats um i did a lot of body weight things i didn't feel comfortable jumping uh explosive movements like a jump squat probably to like at least six or seven months uh, running felt really uncomfortable for me probably for the first six or seven months Anything with an impact to your hip joint is going to feel slightly uncomfortable. So don't expect that after a surgery like this, you are going to bounce right back. You need to take your time. You get one opportunity to heal properly and who wants to go through surgery again? Not me, especially that surgery. Um, so yeah. A year, I felt much better. Do I think my training has gotten back to pre-hip surgery? No. I took a long, hard look at how I was training and said to myself, is it worth injury if I do really really heavy squats and don't feel 100 percent comfortable in the end if i can do other activities and other exercises that will still help me like maintain a good shape i'll do that i'll do that all day long i do not fear going into the gym and looking puny by putting 10 pound plates um, i don't care who's looking at me when i'm working out or judging me i'd rather feel comfortable i'd rather feel safe and I don't want to undo all of the stuff I had done by having my surgery. After surgery, um, I still do have popping in my hip. That's something um, I think I talked about previously as well is I used to have this thing I had to do every day where I'd have to manually pop my hip and relieve pressure and I still do that, though not as much, but um, I still do have popping and clicking. And I will say that you will have that in the months after your surgery and it will make you really nervous. It is normal. Sounds, popping, relief of pressure, all very, very normal, but it is scary after a surgery to hear those kind of sounds. Um, but I did have those and I still continue to have those today. In terms of range of motion, everything is completely back to normal, if not better. Um, I can do everything I did 
pre-surgery and I can do more. So growing up, I was a cheerleader in college. I did cheerleading. Um, I've always been very limber, very flexible, especially in my hips. And um, that actually came back completely two years after. So um, it's definitely something you have to work at flexibility. I do do now a lot of yoga. I love yoga now, not something I did at all during any of my like time weight training. I was like so focused on like growing muscle and eating a ton and gaining weight and trying to like create this like certain physique that I never did stretching. I never did like yoga. And now I love it because it's great for flexibility. It's great for, you know, health and mind and body and spirit. Um, but I definitely recommend yoga as a regimen to include when you are coming out of surgery, when you are cleared, just so you can get your flexibility back, which is so important. And a lot of the times what can actually cause some pain in the lower back or in you know the hamstring area is just tight hamstrings. Um, now that I've done a lot more yoga, I don't feel so much pain in my lower back. But that's a whole nother thing. So this is a long video, um, but I will tell you that my overall experience having FAI hip surgery was very positive. Um, do I think it solved all of my problems? It did in my hip. I will absolutely say that. Um, I don't have numbness when I sleep anymore. I don't have pain in the side of my leg and I don't have pain in my glutes anymore like I used to have. So in terms of issues with my hip, those are all gone. I am definitely uh, happy that I did the surgery and in the end, I didn't cause more issues. I just went through probably the first three to six months of kind of like, this doesn't feel like it's getting better. I'm still having lower back issues. Maybe I did this and I shouldn't have. I will tell you now after full recovery, I am glad that I did it. It solved my issues with my hip. I continue to have great strength in my legs. I can do everything I did before. So it was worth it. In terms of the issues I've talked about in the past about lower back pain, I still do have some of that. I have L4, L5 degeneration. I have inflammation around um, the lower part of my spine and I do have a little bit of like a slight um, issue with the curve of, of my spine with L5 and S1. So what I will tell you is that my FAI hip surgery did not and was not done to, you know, help fix that. That was a whole separate thing and now I understand that after I have gone going to a chiropractor again a year and a half ago um, and then a year ago I had x-rays done again and it's very clear I can see that those three discs have some of their own issues. So what I do now is treat that with yoga and stretching and I will tell you that it's helped a ton with my lower back pain. So long story short, actually 40 minutes long story short, was it worth it? Yes. Did it fix my hip issues? Yes. Did it fix my back issue? Slightly. But my back issue was a whole other thing, which has now been pretty much treated with maintenance of, you know, non-inflammatory diet, eating non-inflammatory foods, taking anti-inflammatory things like turmeric, which is great. Um, I have also in the last two years gone to a completely vegetarian diet. I cut out all meats, I cut out all dairy, I cut out eggs. Um, I live pretty much a plant-based lifestyle now and have done so and highly recommend it. Um, so it really helped me with just overall how my body feels, how I feel. Um, but yeah, I hope that this was helpful. Um, I'm going to wrap it up now because I'm also losing daylight here and just wanted to do this really quickly and very informally. Um, if you have any questions, you can feel free to comment them down below. 
Um, I'm going to do a much better job of being active here on YouTube. I will be reading all of your questions. I will answer any of your questions. If you need recommendations or um, links for products, I'll also include those down below. Um, but please let me know if you found this video helpful. And also, I'm going to try and do a much better job of sharing on YouTube. And so let me know what you guys would like to hear and see. Um, thank you so much for all your support and all of your comments and encouragement on all of my past FAI videos. Um, I know what it feels like going through an endless journey of trying to find answers to feel better. And um, if there's anything you take away from this video, it is that there are people out there who have been through something similar. Feel free to reach out to them. Um, you can read lots of articles online, but I, I definitely highly recommend talking to people who've gone through it instead of reading medical journals and you know WebMD and all of that stuff. I've been through it. I know what the recovery is like. I know what my mindset was going into it. I know the ups and downs of recovery two years later, but um, it turned out okay. You will be okay. Whatever route you decide to go, surgery or not, and I hope everything works out for you. Thank you all so much for watching and take care. Um, and I'll see you all soon.